Hey, this is Chef Robert Irvine, and this morning I'm here at Miso Robotics with the CEO Mike Bell to talk about the future, the future of robotics in food service. Hey, Mike. Hey, Robert. Thanks for joining us. What can you, you show me that I can't do it myself. QSRs, right, especially. And you were talking about Chippy and Flippy and all that, what does that mean? Yeah, well, this actually is Chippy here, and we designed and developed this for Chipotle to help them prepare chips. And this is being deployed now in Chipotle. And your question's a good one. There's a lot of tasks that exist in a QSR that when even just the average person lays eyes on the task, you can kind of determine that's a pretty repetitive maybe sometimes monotonous job, wouldn't it be better for a robot to do? And so we're progressing through the industry kind of looking at what tasks back of the house we can take over with a robot. And Robert, there are a lot. There well, it could be anything, right? Because when we talk about, we talk about chips, we talk about french fries, we talk about burgers, they're mundane tasks that I presume you're working on, right? Because yes. I can do this all day, but the inconsistency of Seasoning a french fry, seasoning a, seasoning a chip, flipping a burger, it's human error. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of that, but what's happened in the last couple of years is all this technology that years ago was too expensive, it was not accessible, um, it's all changed. Uh, robotic arms are super affordable, there's computer vision, there's motion planning, all this technology has converged that allows solutions like the ones we develop to be super affordable, to have an ROI for the customers in the first month and for us to install them in a way that ultimately is not gonna be that different from putting in a new refrigerator, plugging it in, turning it on, and having it work. There'll be a day very, very soon where robotic food preparation will be the norm for fast food restaurants, and we're leading that. Well, for me as a QSR, it's all about making money, right? Speed of service, right. accuracy, consistency. Get it in, get them out. And it works in real life. Like for example, this is Flippy. Flippy is preparing frozen food right now uh, here in our robotics lab, but also in restaurants across America. And what it's able to do is to take a frozen food into in, through a number of baskets, in this case there are six baskets, and time it precisely so that the robot arm is never busy doing something else where it needs to take the food out exactly when it's done. These are tasks that human beings are not innately great at, but machines are, are actually born to be great at. But if I'm a QSR, what are you giving me? Yeah. Consistency, I get the consistency, but I've already got a refrigerator. I've normally got three or four fryers. Right. What are you asking for me to put a system like this in? Yeah, well believe it or not, a system like this plugs in and fits inside most QSRs. They generally have two or three or four fryers, we stand up overnight over those existing fryers. It takes a little bit more space on the left side, maybe 36 inches, and what it relieves is essentially two human bodies that before Flippy, those human bodies would be busy at peak periods, both cooking French fries. After Flippy gets installed, the restaurant can go down to less than half a person at this station. And along the way, the food is more accurately cooked, uh, there's very little downtime, and the workers, frankly, are a lot happier because they're freed up to go do other tasks within the QSR to actually make it a happier, calmer, more productive workplace for them. For me, what I see is that um, it becomes more consistent, right? Yeah. And I don't have it, an employee calling out because it's a robot. Right. <laughs> 365 days of consistency and saving money. Right, right, right. We're working with the leading restaurant brands in America. Some of them we've announced, others they're piloting, but almost all of them bring us in because they have a labor shortage. Along the way, they find out that there's a different benefit and that's food accuracy. And just frankly, uh, the, the, how precisely and perfectly the food is cooked. So what you're seeing here is Fli Flippy following a restaurant uh, recipe very, very specifically. This particular restaurant wants the fries agitate it a little bit, hang after the basket, uh, after the basket comes out of the oil. Whatever specific recipe the, re the restaurant gives us, we can follow to the T every time. 
and do it faster. And like you said, they don't call out. And frankly, works many times 24 hours a day. Flippy's installed in several locations that run 24 hours a day, straight through. And here we go. Dumping perfectly cooked french fries. So you know I want to try this, right? Yeah, please. This is a test. OK, Robert, this is your first robot prepared french fry. It feels great. Got a great texture, got a great crunch. Yeah. And they come out like this all the time, yeah. every time. Yeah, we, we win taste tests all the time. We cook food and have restaurants, chefs come in and say, okay, does this meet our quality standards? Chipotle, for example, is a very, very specific recipe and they want that followed precisely. Their food is very artisanal in terms of how it's prepared. Uh, we can have a robot mimic that perfectly and that allows the humans at Chipotle to go do things that they'd rather do that are actually more productive for the overall location. So here's a question. Yeah. Whatever I do in the kitchen, you can pretty much mimic with robotics. Yeah. Today, yes, in many food preparation areas. Others, the future will hold. For example, will, will could, could Flippy make guacamole? Someday, but there's bigger solutions that are easier to solve that we're focused on first. But ultimately, when you look back at house, five years from now, 10 years from now, it's hard for anyone to kind of look at the work that goes on back the house and say, okay, I believe a human will be doing that five or 10 years from now. Dishwashing is a great example. Drink dispensing is another example. We're working to automate all these tasks, not so that the restaurant is humanless, but so that the restaurant has humans working with humans and machines doing the repetitive tasks. Years ago, you could make a machine that would do this kind of thing, but you couldn't do it at scale and you couldn't do it at a price that made it approachable for the average restaurant. We sell this to restaurants for about $3,000 a month. Kind of acts like a lease. $3,000 a month is actually about the price of one human being working this station, when in fact it takes over for two people. But and, I'm watching, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I'm watching this. It's giving me the right amount of french fries. Right, there it is. Yep. Picks it up. This is exactly how I would this is what freaks me out a little bit here. Yeah. Because yeah. he's doing what I would do in, in the... Yeah. Drops it. Yeah, it mimics human-like motion. When people see this for the first time at a restaurant, they're often mesmerized. They ask if they can take pictures. Uh, they didn't realize that technology like this was readily available. Um, and they're seeing it more and more. But it, when you look at the arm, it's been described oftentimes like a Cirque du Soleil because it's very human-like. And it moves precisely the way we want it to move. Uh, it does it very reliably and again affordably. And I think the thing for me is, it's doing three different things now and nothing's overcooking. Right. Right? Right. So three times to get french fries, yet all the motions. And french fries in particular, uh, they, they really need to be cooked precisely. If the cook time is a minute or so and you're 10 seconds too early or 10 seconds too late, it's, it's noticeable. And french fries are oftentimes the first thing people take out of the bag and taste. So it's what's remembered by the brand and it's kind of the, you know, the, the first thing that people will, will put in their mouth after ordering. So getting that right is important. 10 seconds too early and it's a little bit limp and it's not great. 10 seconds too late and it's a little bit crunchy. Uh, we do them just right every time. It's the future for sure. I'm really intrigued as to what is coming next. Okay, we've got chips, we've got, we got hamburgers, we've got french fries. What do you consider as the next innovation? Well, we're looking a lot at drinks because automating the drink, the drink station is another bottleneck in the restaurant industry. Uh, and we're also looking at food prep. If you can kind of think about the things you could picture a robot doing, uh, putting pepperoni on pizza is an easy example. It's pretty straightforward. A robot could do it very, very rapidly. So in our R&D lab, we've got a bunch of different robots in development. And what you'll see from us is a continued uh, a litany of announcements about this new product and this new product. Um, yeah, here we go. Let's grab one. The good news is we're facing an industry that's just truly gargantuan. There's 250,000 fast food restaurants in the U.S. alone. And there's about 800,000 worldwide. Every single one of these have labor challenges. Every single one of them have repetitive tasks. And every one of them can benefit from food that's more precisely cooked.